In a minute, so in this group, we're going to be doing over an example of a motion problem. Uh, the, the question is as follows: It says, um, a plane is traveling at a constant rate. A plane traveling at a constant rate takes as long to go 450 miles with the wind as it does uh, to go 375 miles against the wind. So the wind is blowing at 50 miles per hour. What is the rate uh, of the plane in smooth air? All right, so. Anytime you're dealing with um, motion problems, you always have to use the Dirk equation. Uh, the Dirk equation is distance equals rate times time. Okay? And um, in any motion problem, there's always a link in variables. There's also variables that link the two cases that you're working on. Okay? So that, that, that down, this, that is the link in. Lincoln variable. Okay, the Lincoln variable could be B, constant distance in both cases. It could be R, or same rate, or it could be time T. So let's take a look at this situation that we're dealing with. The plane that I'm traveling at a constant speed takes 450 miles to travel with the wind. In one case is travel with the wind, and then the second case is. 375 miles against the wind. So those are the two cases we have, traveling with the wind and against the wind. So let's uh, give you a following to the two cases. I'm going to call this with wind. And then the other one I'm going to call this against wind. Against wind. All right. Okay, so let's write down the formula for both cases. The distance with the wind is going to be distance, CW equals rate to the wind rw times time with the wind tw okay and then distance against the wind is going to be d a for distance against the wind equals the rate against the wind times the time against the wind all right so uh we're going to ask ourselves what is the lincoln variable in this case um in both cases there is there is um Something that's constant in both cases, um, that's exactly the same. It's not constant, but the same as the other. Okay, so they travel the same distance. Right, so the plane traveling the same rate at the same rate in both case, both cases, or is it traveling at the same for the same time period in both cases? Okay, so we'll do it. If we list everything we have, then we can know the Lincoln variable. Okay, so let's start with the distance. The distance with the wind, dw, distance with the wind. So you're told that it takes 450, it will limit to cover 450 miles with the wind, right? And what is the distance against the wind? Distance against the wind is 375. We can see that these two variables, these two constants are different. So the distances are going to be different. That is not the linking variable. It makes sense that you travel further if you're with the wind, right? Because you're traveling faster. You need to go shorter against the wind because you're traveling slower. All right, so how about the rate? The rate with the wind, uh, we don't know. We're asked to find what the rate of the plane is in still air. So um, let's just call X the rate of the plane. So the rate of the, with the wind is going to be the rate of the plane, which is X plus the rate of the wind, which is 15. Okay? Um, so we can declare the variable up here, let x equals rate of the plane. Rate of plane. Okay? Rate of plane, where? In still air. In still air. All right, so uh, x is the rate of the plane in still air. The rate with the wind is going to be the rate of the plane plus the rate of the wind. Now, what about the rate against the wind? If the plane is going against the wind, it's going to be uh, the rate of the plane, which is x, minus the rate of the wind, which is 15. You can clearly see that the rates are different because it's quicker with the wind and slower against the wind. Now, how about time? Guess what? They're flying for exactly the same time period. That's why they're covering greater distance, right? So guess what? The time with the wind, let's call that equal to t. And the time against the wind is also equal to t. So that tells us that our linking variable for this problem is time. All right, there's always going to be a linking variable. And if you examine the problem, 
uh, it will it will make it will make a uh, uh, more sense. Okay. So let's just give, let me just give you a visual before I start solving the problem. So if we have a plane, let's say this is a plane. Uh, for time t, it covers 450 miles with the wind. So if it covers 450 miles with the wind, so it covers, uh, let's bring it down, 450 miles uh, with the wind. All right, and at the same time, if it's traveling against the wind, what do you think it's going to cover? The same amount of time? Absolutely not. It's going to cover a shorter distance. Okay, so it covers a shorter distance when it's going against the wind. So with wind is 450, and against the wind is 350. So 350 miles against the wind. Okay? Assuming that the wind is blowing, in, assuming that the wind is blowing in this direction. So the wind in this direction causes it to cover more, and then at the same time, T when it's going against the wind, it covers less distance. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve the equation. So all we just need to do is plug in the, these two variables into our equation, plug in the two constants so into our equation. Then we're going to use the linking variable, which is time T, to connect the two equations that we have. Okay. So on the left side, uh, we know that, uh, let me write the formula, distance to the wind is equal to rate to the wind times time to the wind. Distance to the wind is 450. Rate to the wind is x plus 15, which is the speed of the plane plus the speed of the uh, air times the time, which is p. Okay? Um, and on the other case, the distance against the wind is equal to the rate against the wind times the time against the wind. The distance against the wind is 375. The rate against the wind is so the rate of the plane minus the rate of the wind, which is 15 times the time t. Okay? So if I can get p by itself in both equations, then I'll fit my equations to each other and I can solve it using proportions. Okay? So on the left side, I divide both sides by x plus 15. And x plus 15. And then that gives me uh, time t. So this one counts reduce this out. We have the time t uh, with the wind at 450 divided by x plus 15. And on the right side, to get t by itself, I'll divide by x minus 15 both sides. And x minus 15. And then we're going to have t equals. 375 over x minus 15. Then the time of difference is equal in both cases. Now we can now set these proportions equal to each other. So we're going to have 450 over x plus 15 equals 375 over x minus 15. Okay? I can solve this by cross multiplying and then we'll use the properties of Osborne to get it to that. Okay? So the cross multiply, we're going to have 450 times x minus 15. Yeah, let's multiply this up across. Equal, we're going to multiply this in our nature across to there. So it's going to be um, it's going to be 375 times x plus 15. Okay? So we're going to distribute both sides, distribute the number here and distribute the number there. So on the left side, we'll have 450x minus uh, 6,750 equals 375x plus 5,625, all right? So to get all the variables on one side and all these uh, constants on the other side, I will proceed to subtract 375x from both sides, move the x to the left side, and I will add 6,750 to both sides to move the numbers all the way to the right side. Okay, that was doing two steps in one uh, using the properties of equality. So we can then go ahead and add to my both sides. Uh, on the left side, we're going to have, um, yeah, on the left side, we're going to have, come on, these 75x, and these two cancel out. 
And on the right side, these two cancel out. If you combine these two, you're going to end up with uh, 12,375. Okay? And then to get x, y itself, what you do is you uh, basically divide both sides by, um, by 75. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, divide both sides by uh, 75. Divide by 75 and divide by 75. And then we're going to have uh, x equal to you divide that out to get 165. All right, so this is going to be um, the rate of the plane in steel air. Okay, miles per hour. So the rate of the plane in steel air, the rate of the plane in steel air is 165 miles per hour. Okay, so there, there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Uh, collection of tips on the top of my Feel free to share the content of this video with your friends via Facebook or Twitter. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.